This is the A7D, designed and built by Vought Aeronautics Division, LTV Aerospace Corporation, for the United States Air Force. The Navy version, the A7E, completed its maiden flight in the fourth quarter of 1968. Both are advanced models of the A7A and B, which have been on duty with the fleet since the fall of 1966. And both D and E models will have new and updated avionics systems to provide superior navigation and weapon delivery capabilities. One of these systems, the head-up display, is the subject of this film. The head-up display is a newly developed navigation weapon delivery aid that places essential A7 flight data within the pilot's normal field of view, allowing him to fix his attention during critical phases of a mission. The display has four modes of operation. En route, terrain following, attack, and landing. Each mode can be displayed without scales when only basic data is required, or with scales when the pilot needs additional information. A warning symbol appears in all modes when a signal is received from any master caution or fire warning source. Now let's look at each display in more detail to see what each symbol represents and how it operates, so that a complete description of the symbology can be permitted. First, the en route mode. The flight path marker indicates the aircraft's velocity vector, or in other words, the direction the aircraft is actually flying. An artificial horizon line maintains its relation to the actual horizon, regardless of the aircraft attitude. When the aircraft dives, negative flight path angle lines appear. These lines are dashed and are calibrated in five degree increments. It should be noted that the five degree negative flight path angle line is always visible at the bottom of the display during level flight. When the aircraft climbs, positive flight path angle lines appear. These lines are solid and also calibrated in five degrees. When operating in the en route mode without scales, one additional symbol is displayed, the flight director. The flight director indicates the steering command to reach a pre-selected destination. As you see here, the aircraft is off course to the left. For navigation in the en route mode, only azimuth steering command is provided. However, in terrain following, both azimuth and elevation commands are provided. By banking to the right, the aircraft is brought back on course when the flight path marker is centered over the flight director. If the pilot wants more flight information, he switches on the scale display. Now let's see what additional information is provided with scales. First, the heading display. This indicates the magnetic compass heading, which here is 175 degrees. Next, the airspeed scale. The airspeed scale is divided into 10 increments. Each increment represents 10 knots. At the bottom of the scale is a number that represents knots in hundreds. The airspeed scale is now indicating 230 knots. As the speed of the aircraft increases, a solid bar begins to rise, similar to a thermometer. As airspeed reaches 300, the numeral 3 appears at the bottom of the scale and the solid bar begins to rise again. Airspeed is now 430 knots. When the aircraft decelerates, action of the indicator is just the reverse. And now the altitude scale. This scale is similar in appearance and function to the airspeed scale. It is also divided into 10 increments. Each increment represents 100 feet altitude. The number at the bottom of the scale represents altitude in thousands of feet. The altitude scale reads 4,500 feet. The triangle to the right of the scale indicates vertical velocity or how many feet per minute the aircraft is climbing or descending. However, when reading vertical velocity, 
Each increment of the altitude scale represents 200 feet per minute. Each mark to the right of the solid bar represents 500 feet per minute. The triangle is centered in level flight. As the aircraft goes into a 10 degree dive and begins to pick up speed, the vertical velocity triangle moves down the scale indicating the number of feet per minute the aircraft is descending. Simultaneously, the altimeter scale begins to drop. Let's stop here a moment and take a closer look at the display. The vertical velocity triangle is indicating a descent of at least 1,000 feet per minute. The altimeter scale reads 3,700 feet. Airspeed is 270 knots, and the negative 10 degree flight path angle line is even with the flight path marker, indicating a 10 degree dive. Note that the flight director is still centered in the flight path marker, which means that although the aircraft is in a dive, it is still on course. As the dive is increased to 15 degrees, the display responds accordingly. The aircraft is now closing with the ground at approximately 8,000 feet per minute. As the pilot pulls the aircraft up, note the action of the altimeter and vertical velocity triangle. The pilot pulls the aircraft up in a 10 degree climb, then banks to the left and levels off at 3,300 feet, then turns back on course. Note that the flight director is always visible in the en route mode as a fly to steering command. The terrain following mode need not be treated in detail since it differs from the en route mode only in the steering command display. Terrain following, in addition to azimuth steering, also displays an elevation steering command. Now the attack mode without scales. Additional symbols used in the attack mode are a diamond-shaped aiming reticle stowed inside the flight path marker, a bomb fall line. As the name implies, it is a line of predicted impact points. Two bombing solution cues. The one below designates the solution cue for level, dive, toss, and loft deliveries. The upper cue for high angle loft. Next, a pull-up anticipation cue, which is stowed at the bottom of the display. Finally, a side slip indicator allows the pilot to zero out side slip for more accurate weapons delivery. This symbol is used in conjunction with a lubber line and is consistent with a side slip ball on the attitude director indicator. As in all other modes, the scale display can be used if necessary. Now let's see how the symbols are used in a normal attack mode delivery. As the aircraft approaches the target, a large factory, the pilot maneuvers the bomb fall line over the target. Then the aiming reticle is manually slewed so that it overlays the target. The pilot then presses the designate button on the stick, which causes the computer to lock the aiming reticle onto the target. As the target comes within range, the two solution cue symbols appear. The cues appear as one line on the bomb fall line. Then as the pilot begins the final run on the target, the first solution cue moves down the bomb fall line. At this point, he presses and holds the armament release switch. Now the pilot must fly the aircraft with a flight path marker centered over the bomb fall line until the solution cue intersects the flight path marker. Note that the pull-up cue is also moving up the bomb fall line. When the solution cue intersects the flight path marker, the ordinance is released automatically. If the pilot elects not to use the first cue, he can release the armament switch prior to intersect and either abort the bomb run or use the second cue for a high angle loft delivery. When the pull-up cue intersects the flight path marker, the breakaway symbol tells the pilot that pull-up is mandatory. He starts his pull-up, the breakaway symbol disappears, and the pull-up cue moves back to the bottom of the display. Now that we've seen the normal attack mode, 
used when the target is clearly visible. Let's consider offset bombing where conditions are still VFR, but the target itself is hidden. In this case, the factory will be the aim point. The target this time will be in the foliated area to the right. The offset coordinates, a predetermined distance from factory to target, were entered in the computer prior to takeoff. As the aircraft enters the target area, the aiming reticle is manually slewed over the aim point. Then the pilot designates. This automatically commands the reticle to overlay and lock on the computed target. Although lock on has occurred, manual aiming refinement is still possible should the target become visible. The bomb fall line is positioned to indicate the required azimuth steering. The pilot now steers the aircraft to put the flight path marker over the bomb fall line. When the target comes within range, the solution cues appear and the bomb run is carried out as before. Now let's again bomb in the offset mode but this time under IFR conditions using radar offset. The aim point and target are the same. As the aircraft approaches the target area, the pilot activates radar offset. This causes the cursors to appear on the radar PPI and automatically overlay and lock on the computed aim point. As the aircraft closes on the aim point, Manual aiming refinements on the PPI are available if required to enhance accuracy. When the pilot designates, the display responds the same as normal offset. The aiming reticle moves over and locks on the computed target. The bomb fall line is positioned to indicate azimuth steering. Then, as in the other bomb modes, the pilot flies the aircraft so the flight path marker is centered over the bomb fall line. He maintains his position until the solution cue intersects the flight path marker. At this point, ordinance is released automatically. In the A7D landing mode, the flight path marker, the horizon line, and flight path angle lines are the same as other modes. But additional symbology consists of the landing director dot which provides command fly to information and perspective lines which give localizer and glide slope error. These two symbols are positioned by process data from ILS and the flight director computer. There is also an angle of attack indicator which is present in all display modes but normally out of view. Scales are also available should the pilot elect to use them. Before landing, Let's read the symbology. Airspeed is 130 knots. Altitude is 1900 feet and vertical velocity is 600 feet per minute. The angle of attack is too low and the landing director dot commands steering to the left and down. The perspective lines indicate that the aircraft is below and to the right of the desired flight path. For simplification, Let's remove the scales for final approach. As the pilot satisfies the proper command maneuver, the director dot will center in the flight path marker. However, the perspective lines still indicate position error. As the command maneuver nears completion, the perspective lines begin to center on the director dot, then close to a single line when position error becomes zero. If the aircraft deviates from the desired flight path, the landing director dot and perspective lines respond accordingly, allowing the pilot to correct prior to touchdown. Now, let's see the A7E landing mode under normal operating IFR conditions. Although the same symbols used in the A7D landing are displayed, command signals are not generated until the aircraft has been flown to an acquisition window about four miles after the carrier. Here, the director dot and horizontal lines appear, indicating that lock-on by shipboard search radar has occurred. 
From this point on, these two symbols are positioned by data link command. When the aircraft is steered so that the flight path marker is centered on the director dot, both lateral and elevation glide path error have been corrected. If the pilot has selected the semi-automatic mode, he uses the displayed information to manually land the aircraft. If he has selected automatic mode, he simply monitors the display, since data link signals are then coupled to the autopilot to provide precise hands-off control to touchdown.